Secretary General, the Director General SIS, Cabinet Secretary, Chief of Protocol, Service uh, uh, Military or Security Personnel here present, Senior Government Officials here present, Invited Guests, Members of the Media. On behalf of my Cabinet colleagues, I would like to thank His Excellency, the President, for giving us the opportunity to serve in cabinets. For those of us who are old timers in this, for the second time, and for the newcomers. And also on behalf of my cabinet colleagues and His Excellency the President to welcome the new appointees to cabinets. The appointment to cabinet is a privilege one. But the position is not driven by privileges. It is and should be driven by performance, by results, by delivery, and by development. To do that, we have to work as a team. And to work as a team, we need to consult we need to coordinate, we need to cooperate, we need to dialogue. Working in silos would fragment the development agenda and therefore the realization of the aspirations of the NDP would be undermined. So it is important that we work as a team, we work as a group, hence the name cabinet, that's what it is. You know, it's a family. Let us work as a team. Move the development agenda of this country to fulfill the expectations of the person who appointed us to this position. And by expectation, by extension, to fulfill the expectations of the Gambian people. They expect us to develop, to, I mean, to, to deliver. The, ele the recent elections is a watershed in Gambian history. We cannot fail. We cannot afford to fail. There are some pressing challenges that are facing us recently. One is the crisis of the rising cost of living. And I would challenge the Minister of Finance, the Governor Central Bank, the incoming Minister of Trade, the GRA people to come together, work with the Chamber of Commerce and the business community to see how we could mitigate these difficult times. The second challenge is the security situation in this country. Again, the same challenge goes to the Minister of Interior, to the Minister of Defense, to the security outfits of this country and see how best we can address those things so that this place is safe for everybody, it is safe for investment, it is safe for tourism. Those two things are immediate. These things we need to have immediate strategies to address those I mean, challenging issues. We need to consult and talk frankly to each other when we think things are not going wrong, I mean, uh, things are not going right. We need to be able to support each other, share ideas, and move the agenda of this country forward. The task to which we are called to deliver is a tall order. And that requires focus, it requires the Spartan character, it requires tough-mindedness, it requires strategic and perspective thinking. It cannot be business as usual. 
you must have strategies in place to fulfill the expectations of the people. So that five years hence, when the president, this government, this cabinet, it he is held to account, we are able to say that yes, we did it, we delivered. That is the most important thing. It's a social contract and we cannot fail and cannot afford to fail. Tough decisions are ahead, but you have to take them. There are no lavender words for the truth. We have to take those tough decisions to be able to deliver to the Gambian people on the mandate of the presidents and on the dictates of conscience. On that note, I have no doubt that in our rendezvous with 2026, we would not found one thing. His Excellency the President, once again, I would like to return thanks to you on behalf of the, I mean, the cabinet. Thank you very much. On your appointment, uh, how do you feel today as the new VP of the Republic of the Ghana? Well, it's, uh, it's a very important day for all of us because the, finally the new government has been sworn in. And uh, that is just one aspect and it's a ceremonial thing. More importantly is uh, what we do after the swearing in. And as I said in my speech, you know, this is performance based. Um, people should not just um, warm the chair. It is not because you don't follow the privileges of the office, but the terms of reference of the office to deliver for the Gambian people. You know, that's why we are here. We are here on behalf of the Gambian people on the mandate of the president to make sure that the assignment that uh, he has given us, we deliver. Then the, our appointment would have been justified if we deliver to the Gambian people. What are the plans we have for the next five years? Well, I think, as I said, we have to address the cost of living, the crisis. Yes, that's one. We have to address the rising crime. Um, we have to also I mean, uh, look at our decentralization how do we I mean, empower the local authorities who are closer to the people to deliver on behalf of the government and the Gambian people? I mean, we also have to look at our agriculture sector. Um, it's not for the past decades we have been talking about self-sufficiency in rice. If we are able to achieve that, it will cut down on our import bill and therefore we'll have more fiscal space to spend in other sectors. We also have to look at um, quality at the level of the education sector, relevance and appropriateness, um, because that also addresses the issue of not only quality, but I mean, uh, skills that are necessary for youth employment. Those are some of the outstanding things that we really have to look at critically and strategically to be able to I mean, uh, deal uh, with some of this unemployment, the poverty, rising cost of living, poverty reduction, we have to deal with all those things. So that at least um, at the end of the five years, we may not be able to achieve everything, but at least we should go beyond at least 60, 65% in terms of our performance, you know, to the, in our respective sectors. Well, I think, I mean, we can be innovative about it. Um, we have to talk to the business community, talk to the Chamber of Commerce, look at the tax regime. I mean, uh, Central Bank has to deal with the monetary policies that addresses inflation. Finance has to deal with the fiscal policies, you know, that deals with the economic uh, performance of the, of the economy. Foreign affairs is important here because there are some global issues which impact on this. And a strategic, I mean, uh, responsive foreign affairs policy could help us in getting some of the resources that we need in, over, in order to be able to address some of these um, national challenges. So it's some, in some sort of, uh, you know, complementary, the national effort plus the international effort coming together to address the development I mean, uh, imperatives of this nation. Tourism. The minister heading the tourism industry is a doyen in that area. But I want the minister to look 
at the sector. Is it the right way to go all inclusive? Do we need tourists who would just come here, buy a bottle of water and keep refilling it from one dispenser to another until they go home? Or who sits in some nearby restaurant and buys food? High spending tourists is what we are interested in. Look at also the sun and the sun and the sea is becoming a monotony. When it is summertime in Europe, you spend the sun and the sun in sea, the sea in Spain or Portugal or somewhere in the Mediterranean. Let's go for ecotourism, perhaps. Let's go for river tourism. Let's look at something that is strategic. And the products that you find in the tourist market, if you buy it, if you come once, you buy once, twice, that, the third time you don't know how to buy anything because it's the same old thing. I think the Hospitality Institute, you have broadened the curriculum, Mr. Minister. Let's look at, look at Senegal, look at Indonesia. How do we diversify the tourist products in terms of what they would be buying? Perhaps using local material or be creative about it. Since the days of Vingresso, it's the same thing. It's the mon it becomes monotonous. It has to be attractive. It has to, you know, we should not be trapped in reactive logic. It should be proactive logic to get it right. The environment here is, I'm using it as a portmanteau term, not as a sectorial term, Honorable Minister. As a portmanteau term, the environment con it deals with the land, it deals with the waters, it deals with the forest, it deals with the people. That is important. But there's a particular thing, that, I mean, particular issue that I want to address when it comes to the Minister of the Environment. And it is this business of deforestation and also these logs, this um, timber issue. And this is where the security comes in. It showed us the intelligent mind to see, to understand how trucks of timber can leave Elara past all those security checkpoints, over 15, 20 of them and read the ports. And you have security at the ports. You have inspection at the ports. I don't know, you have Adekuda plus plus, I don't whatever, at the ports. <laughs> and they are shipped out. Something is fundamentally wrong with that. And the security have to fix it. The security, they have to fix it. Ports have to fix it. Or they are answerable to government. Vice President Dr. Ali Badarajouf affirms that the government is working on plans for the relocation of people residing on waterways to solve the flooding disaster that has currently rendered thousands of families homeless within the Greater Banjul area during his visit on Sunday to communities affected by the heavy flooding. The VP together with Mayor Ben Suda of KMC and other senior government officials started their tour of the flooded affected areas in Kotu, from there they proceed to Sangun Silla Brown Street in Joshua, then to Bakote, and then visited Sukuta Nema as well. Um, the minister will work on identifying a site which will be exclusively for those displaced people or people who are living in the quarries or in waterways, and we'll move them over there. You know, so um, I'm calling on, uh, we have the, the mayor of KMC is also here. So he will work with I mean, the, the ministry and the environment ministry so that when we come to relocate, we'll put resources together and move these people out. Joshua Ibo town is one of the most affected areas in the Kanfi municipality and has been prone to flooding over the years, according to the mayor, Talib Ahmed Ben Shuda. Residents say the area is prone to flooding and harbors reptiles such as crocodiles. The mayor of KMC, Talib Ahmed Ben Shuda, explain some of the major challenges and urge people to avoid illegal dumping of waste on the roads and also stop settling on waterways. We see the water is flowing but in many instances it's just too much 
meaning the, the people settled uh, uh, in many areas are blocking waterways. Uh, we also see that the, cap the, ca the capacity of canals have been uh, uh, ex ex exhausted and water is overflowing. But we also want to remind people that uh, uh, the community has to also do their part. They have to make sure they don't indiscriminately dump in uh, gutters and the riverine area. And also not to illegally settle, because if you settle where water is supposed to exit, uh, you're also going to have uh, flooding. So we had the VP talk to the Ministry of Lands to look at resettling many people, to look at uh, creating affordable housing that I have advocated for for many years, so people can live in safe areas that are well planned. In his response, the Vice President urged the Mayor of KMC to work with the National Disaster Management Agency and the local government ministry to find a solution to the matter within the country. The team also visited Barkwater, where the Vice President was equally updated about the heavy flash flooding that occurred within the community, which causes massive destruction to properties. Families in the area were left with no option but to run for their lives as they watched the flood destroy their houses. The authorities said plans are underway for the construction of water canals to enable water to move freely and to minimize flooding. However, there are challenges in ensuring this be done. If you want to widen this place, again, a lot of settlements will also be affected. Okay. That's something that, um, the, that the government has to address, the local government has to address. Are you going to demo, demolish it completely or are you going to relocate them? We need to look at it very critically and to avoid people settling on waterways. Blocking waterways is going to be devastating to our population. And the waste management, as the Honorable Minister have mentioned, is key in this. This is a waterway that goes all the way to Abuko, right down to the river, again down by Denton Bridge. So if it is blocked in any way, definitely we have to expect floods. KMC is said to have the densely populated and the mayor said there should be plans to relocate people and decentralize development as a way of encouraging people to stay in their villages. During his visit to the community of Mariamakunda and Yuna Highway, the vice president expresses dissatisfaction towards gum works over the unfinished road construction in the area linking several communities which has been inaccessible. I mean tomorrow we'll call gum works to the office and then they will have to explain to us what happened and uh, we'll also have to send them here and we see how best we can salvage the, the, the situation. These things cannot just continue on like this. No, because if this was something that was commissioned for them to start before the rains, by now they should have completed it. Or should have factored an alternative bearing in mind that when the rains come, it would result to something like this, so that there's an alternative route for the Yuna people and the Mariama Kunda people in terms of you know, communicating, but more importantly for, for the Yuna people. This is unacceptable. You know, it's unacceptable. I mean, we have to take our responsibilities here. You know? um, this Maslaha business has to go out. In Japan, the Vice President ordered the Minister of Local Government and Lands to issue documents for the peoples to stop constructing on waterways from the physical planning. He said the Minister must act on his mandate to ensure such properties are not constructed on waterways. Let fiscal planning and uh, um, local government take lead in this. We cannot have people coming from somewhere and just after money and coming to them, uh, giving them places and then they, uh, they leave us with these kinds of problems. I said it at the retreat and I mean it, you know. And I'm glad that the minister has put an embargo on this. We give priority to fiscal planning and uh, the, the lands, let them demarcate properly with all those things and allocate to Gambians. No, Gamb Gambians cannot afford even the cheapest estate. Let's be honest about this. Sri Fuasanko, the chairman of Brikama Area Council, described Sunday's incident as devastating and called on people to avoid settling on waterways. It is so devastating and it is so alarming and then it is so worrisome also. And then the central government, together with the local government authorities, we are very much aware of it. And we want to stand with our full feet to make sure that you know we do something to the crisis of our people because it needs intervention. But the, 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 the people cannot do, do it alone. I think we need to look at it. You know, certain times, you know, there are certain man-made disasters. We need to look at where we are supposed to build our houses. The Vice President, Dr. Ali Badrajouf, was accompanied by the Minister of Transport, Works and Infrastructure, Honorable Ibrahim Silla, and other senior government officials, including Sirif Abbas Sanyang, the Minister of Local Government and Lands, Ami Faburanjai, Minister for Environment, Fatu Kinte, Minister for Gender, Children and Social Welfare, Sidi Keta, Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, among other ministers. The visit ended in Brickham, where the delegation visited several affected communities. 
for TFA News Review, Dauda Balde.